Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer, 1863 to 1940. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning more to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a pall-like silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to that hope which springs eternal in the human breast they thought if only Casey could but get a whack at that we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat but Flynn preceded Casey as did also Jimmy Blake and the former was a hoodoo while the latter was a cake so upon that stricken multitude grim melancholy sat for there seemed but little chance of casey getting to the bat but flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all and blake the much despised tore the cover off the ball and when the dust had lifted and men saw what had occurred there was jimmy safe at second and flynn a hugging third then from five thousand throats and more there rose a lusty yell it rumbled through the valley it rattled in the dell it pounded on the mountain and recoiled upon the flat for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile lit Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. And while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance flashed in Casey's eye. A sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone on the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him, had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult, he bade the game go on. He signalled to the pitcher, and once more the dun sphere flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the maddened thousands. An echo answered, Fraud! But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold, they saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer has fled from Casey's lips, his teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence, his bat upon the plate, 
And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favoured land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and little children shout. But there is no joy in Mudsville. Great Casey has struck out. OK, this poem is by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. Um, this is known as probably the greatest baseball poem of all time. It's a comic verse. It's a, a Ballad. It's all probably, in my opinion, a bit of doggerel as well. But it's very good and it's very funny. Yeah. Um, and let's see. Uh, Lawrence War. Uh, Lawrence Thayer. Ernest Lawrence Thayer came from Massachusetts, um, and he was a friend of Randolph Hearst. Um, he also worked later for Randolph Hearst. Randolph Randolph Hearst is quite uh, interesting because he's probably the creator of the gutter press of yellow journalism. Um, so, well, he was a good businessman. So, what's the poem about? Well, also notice, this poem is a one-hit wonder. Thayer was only famous for this poem. He was never famous for another poem again. But this one, everybody loved it. But he was never famous again. So, it's one of these groups that has a great hit and then never never has another famous record again so Casey at the bat okay this poem is about a guy called Casey and uh, everybody thinks he's a brilliant batsman and um, everybody's relying on him to save the game and uh, the game that the baseball match gets to the point where um, it, Casey is the last man in and he's the person who can win the match with a home run and save it, save everything for them, for the Muds, Mudville team. Um, and everyone's counting on him and he fails. He doesn't do it. And what's clever with the poem is it's building up and building up for Casey to win and to save the team and for Casey to be a hero. And then we've got this massive anti-climax that we're not expecting at the end where Casey strikes out, he fails and his team lose. And that's the idea. So the outlook, the future wasn't brilliant for the Mudville nine that day. So the nine people in the baseball team. The score stood four to two with but one inning more to play. So it's the last innings um, and the, the team are, are four two down. Yeah, they're the bottom of the ninth inning. And uh, the, the ninth inning starts and Cooney is run out before he gets to first base. And Barrows is also run out uh, before he, th he gets to first base. And a pall like silence. So a pall is uh, is um, where they, they, it sounds like there's going to be a funeral or a smoke like silence was everywhere because the team are now two down and it's the bottom of the ninth. So it's effectively the last out. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. So some of the supporters just got up and left. The rest clung, held on to that hope which springs eternal in the human breast. But the rest of the rest of the supporters, they were optimistic. Yeah, they were hoping for a miracle. They thought if only Casey could but get a whack at that. So if only Casey could come to bat, then we'd win. We'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. So they, um, they'd be happy to bet to put even money. Uh, okay, uh, uh, bet one, win, um, get back two. 
bet one, win one. Um, if Casey got a chance at batting. So they thought that if Casey could get to the bat, they would win. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake. So Flynn and Jimmy Blake were both before Casey in the batting lineup. And the former, Flynn, was a hoodoo, a hoodoo, um, bad luck, while the latter was a cake, was useless. So upon that stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat. So the, the crowd, they were depressed, yeah, because they thought, it's not, it, Casey's not going to get the chance to bat. For there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. So it was very unlikely that Casey would get to the bat because one of these two would be out before Casey's turn. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all. So Flynn scored a single and made it to first base. And Blake, the much despised, Blake who everyone thought was useless, tore the cover off the ball. So I think this actually means he hit the very edge of it. Yeah, uh, he, he, he managed to hit the edge of the ball. And when the dust had lifted, so there was lots of dust and people running around, and men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. Okay, so um, uh, Jimmy's on second base uh, uh, and Flynn is on third base. Then from 5,000 throats and more, there rose a yusty yell. So all the supporters started shouting. It rumbled through the valley. It rumbled through the valley. It rattled in the dell. I think the dell is like in the forest. It pounded on the mountain. It recoiled upon the flat. So it, came, it pounded on the mountain. Boom, boom, boom. And it came back from the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. So finally, Casey is going to get a, ch a chance at bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. So it, Casey looked really relaxed. There was pride in Casey's bearing, the way he held himself. And a smile lit Casey's face, so he's happy. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed, he lifted up his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt t'was Casey at the bat. So everyone knew it was Casey batting and they all were certain that Casey was going to save them. 10,000 eyes, 5,000 pairs of eyes, were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. 5,000 tongues applauded. Well, normally to applaud is like this, but this is a metaphor. They say, they're saying this is good when he wiped them on his shirt. Then, then the writhing pitcher, the pitcher who's moving backwards and forwards, ground the ball, he twisted the ball into his hip. Defiance flashed in Casey's eye. A sneer pah, curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air. So the ball is a sphere covered in leather, and it came hurtling, it came zooming through the air. And Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. And Casey just watched it, and he was too important, too good for this ball. Close by the sturdy batsman, the strong batsman, the ball unheeded sped. So he didn't pay any heed to it. He didn't do anything with it. He just let the ball go past. That ain't my style, said Casey. That's not the ball for me, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people. So the benches now were covered with people. There went up a muffled roar. So people, what's happening? Like the beating of the storm waves. So like a storm beating on a stern, on a serious and distant shore. Kill him. Kill the umpire. 
shouted someone in the stand. So someone said, kill the umpire. It's not a strike. And it's likely they'd have ki killed him had not Casey raised his hand. So Casey raised his hand. Stop, stop, stop. It's OK. It's OK. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So if Casey hadn't done that, they'd have probably killed the umpire. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage, visage shone. So with a, his f a great smile on Casey's face, he stilled the rising tumult. So he quieted the, the shouts from the mob. He bade, he said the game should go on. He signaled to the pitcher and once more uh, the dun sphere flew. So he signaled the, the pitcher to go on and the dun, the brown sphere, the ball flew again. But Casey still ignored it and the umpire said strike two. So it was strike two. Fraud cried the maddened thousands and Echo answered fraud. So some people said fraud and then more people said fraud. But one scornful look, Puff, this isn't important, from Casey and the audience was awed. Ah, amazing. They saw his face grow stern. They saw his face become serious and cold and they saw his muscles strain and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. So now it's strike two. He's got to hit it third time. The sneer has fled from Casey's lips. So this <laughs> has gone. His teeth are clenched up strongly together in hate. He pounds, he hits with cruel violence, his bat upon the plate, upon the home plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, the person throwing the ball holds the ball, and he lets it go, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. So Casey strikes at it very powerfully. And this is the Volta, this is the chain. Oh, somewhere in this favoured land, the sun is shining bright. So somewhere in America, it's a beautiful shining day. And the band is playing somewhere. And somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere there's a band playing and everybody's happy. And somewhere men are laughing. Ha! <laughs> and little children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. But in Mudville, there's no happiness. Because Casey has struck out. So he missed the ball and uh, they lost the game. And that's it. So enough. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer.